Hello everyone, welcome back to NPTEL MOOCs course from IIT Kanpur on developing soft skills and personality. I am Ravichandran from the Department of Humanities and Social Sciences, IIT Kanpur. I have been giving you this course now for the past 4 weeks. Uh, in this week, we particularly focused on communication and in the past 2 lectures, we started discussing about skills related to telephone. And in this lecture in particular, I would like to go for some advanced telephone skills. And before I start, I would like to give a brief uh, recapture, uh, recapturing of what we did in the previous one. In the previous lecture, I actually discussed with you about the various aspects of telephone communication. So, I was generally uh, looking at uh, the communication aspect as self uh, uh, when we use telephone. Particularly, I was trying to look at uh, telephone as a kind of paradoxical uh, equipment that is used in communication. But I was also trying to highlight the fact to you that when you use telephone, it also tells the kind of person that you are. So, the calls you make and the way you make them tells who you are. The calls you avoid and the way you avoid them determines who you are. The people you want to talk and the way you talk to them tells also so much about you. So, it is actually telling, determining, explaining, enumerating about your personality. So, you have to pay great attention to this device. Phone calls today have become very important aspect of human communication. So, you can make it or mar it. And I also highlighted the fact that it is very different from oral communication that is face to face communication. In face to face communication, you see the person in front of you. So, you can modulate your uh, communication, but in this case, you cannot see the other person. So, that makes it a little bit complicated. In order to make it simple, just keep a pen and paper, do not miss important point, note down the numbers particularly. If somebody is giving you a number that you should call, it is important you note it, otherwise you will forget it. Uh, smile and use other uh, cues which will indicate that you are very form and the other person can actually feel it. And be patient even if the other person is slightly trying to prolong it, do not rush, do not try to finish it in a hurry. Be a good listener, be an active listener. Make the other person speak and do not interrupt. Never lose your temper, particularly on phone because it can cause huge damage. You do not know how the other person would react. And if the phone call comes when you are eating or you are chewing something or munching. So, stop it or do not do it when you are making a call. Even if it comes when you are reading, stop reading. Even if you are busy with a computer typing something when it comes, do not pay partial attention to the phone call. Stop typing for the time being and then pay full attention to it, so that the communication remains effective. And when you are in communication with the person, use some verbal encouragements because the other person could not see you actually in front of him or her. So, you can use some verbal encouragements like I see, okay, uh, tell me more, go on. So, these uh, cues will actually make the person feel that you are there and then you are listening very actively to the person's conversation. Now, let us look at some more interesting features of telephone communication and in the last lecture, I discussed with you about the basic skills that you can develop after little bit of philosophizing about the use of telephone. But in this one, let us look at some advanced skills that you need to develop, so that any phone call that you make, you really make it and you, know, you do not mar it. When you make a call, you finish the deal in a very win-win situation. If you are the person who is making a call in the company, everybody knows you will get the deal. So, you learn the art of making significant telephone calls and then you get the best out of it either for you personally or for the people around you in a professional uh, climate. Now, uh, some more interesting features of uh, telephone communication. 
as I've been telling, it's the most commonly used and the most commonly misused form of communication. Often the receiver's response is taken for granted, mostly for the reason that both the speakers cannot see each other. So, they presume what the other person would be reacting at the other side and sometimes it may be entirely the different way the other person may be thinking or behaving or reacting. Now, this is challenging because people presume so many things in their minds. Let me give you a very simple example and you will understand what I mean and why you need to make your uh, telephone communication very perceptive and uh, be very active in terms of listening. Take this simple example, a doctor and a patient both are living in the nearby vicinity. The doctor is so busy, but then uh, uh, the patient wanted to talk to him freely sometimes outside. So, he has been asking for an appointment and then uh, uh, finally, he called the doctor and then the doctor said, let us meet at 7 tomorrow. Now, the patient quickly asked where, so the doctor said in the park during my walk. Okay. Now, on the one hand it looks like as if uh, the doctor gave all the information and the patient got all the information and do you think that they would have met? Actually, they could not meet. The reason is this, the patient all the time sees the doctor going for a walk in the park from 6.30 to 7.30 and to the same park the patient also goes. The doctor so busy and then so absent minded, he also remembered that this person is seen in the evening hours 7 p.m when he goes there in the park for the walk in the evening. But then the doctor forgot to realize and tell him that he also takes a morning walk. He takes walk twice in a day, one around 7 am is definitely in the park and another around 7 pm he is definitely in the park. Now, when he told him, he assumed that the patient would meet him in the morning hours that is around 7 am in the park. Now, the patient since he has seen the doctor only in the evening time, he presumed that okay, the doctor is giving time in the evening. Simply since they did not say am or pm, morning or evening, both could not meet and a very serious uh, communication could not take place. So, the lesson from this effectiveness needs clarity in communication and active listening. If both people slightly cooperated and reduced their presumption, maybe if the doctor told him, I mean 7 pm or if he wanted in the morning, if he said 7 o'clock in the morning, 7 am in the morning or if the patient when he asked him where, when he said in the park during my walk, so what time, is it in the morning or in the evening, so it could have actually uh, contributed to the effectiveness in the communication. Since both presumed and we cannot blame both of them because this is the uh, game that people play when they are involved in communication. We look at more of this when we actually go deep into communication. Right now, when we uh, discuss about advanced uh, skills in terms of uh, using telephone, I would like to give some more tips for developing these advanced skills. Whenever you speak, you need to enunciate clearly. You have to speak, pronounce clearly. When I say pronounce clearly, you need not have to pronounce like the uh, native American or uh, native uh, British uh, person who is speaking English. But if you are speaking in English or in any language, just speak in such a manner so that the words are not misunderstood. Now, take an example of this. So, there was a requirement committee that uh, met uh, from MHRD, one of the institutions and then while meeting, so the person from MHRD was talking to the head of the department of that institution and then the head of the department, uh, he asked whether uh, he needs some uh, uh, thing for uh, the next academic year and the head of the department got up and he said that, uh, so we need at least uh, 
five laps off. Okay. So, then again the person asked, oh, oh, why do you need uh, five laps off? Already you have only one lab. So, he said that, no, no, we need five laps off. So, again he said, why? So, one lab and already you have a lab stuff. So, he kept on saying, no, we need five uh, uh, lab stuff, lab stuff. So, then somebody got up and said, sir, what he means is that lab person is there, but he needs laptops, okay. But the way he said laptops, okay, the computer, it was heard as lab stuff. Okay. So, the b was not pronounced clearly, so that caused the confusion. So, there was another interesting uh, case, a uh, professor, uh, a scientist, actually he uh, wanted to give a demonstration to some of the students about uh, uh, using some uh, frogs in an uh, experiment. So, he called his assistant and then uh, he just gave a call and then he said that, uh, can you get me 10 frogs uh, tomorrow? So, the other person was busy and then he just heard something and then he just wondered that, so okay sir that will be done, but what size do you need? So, uh, do you want uh, the small size one or big size one or medium size? And then the professor uh, and the scientist thought that, okay, medium size will do. Next day, he has called all the students and other uh, researchers and then they were about to uh, start the experiment with the frogs and he was waiting for that. But the person, the assistant brought actually 10 frogs. So, frogs, the gowns that small children can wear of medium size. So, frogs, the way the uh, scientist pronounced was heard by the other person as frogs. Now, again here, either the sender or the receiver could have actually said, see frogs, the animals that I want, not frogs. Or even when the other person heard that as frogs, even when he was asking for the size, maybe the scientist should have realized that he is actually thinking of something else, not the frogs. But he again thought that, okay, I do not need big frogs, so I can go for medium one and then he said so. The confusion could be easily removed if both uh, try to seek explanation and clarification and either one was uh, active listener, it could have been sorted out. When you talk, apart from enunciating clearly, make your voice radiate warmth, respect and helpfulness. So, it should uh, radiate warmth. So, when they hear, they should feel very warm, they should be able to feel that uh, you are uh, talking in a very respectful manner and you are offering help. So, you give some support. If you represent a company, do not begin with hello. So, normally when we make a phone call, we say hello okay. and then we all the time we keep saying hello, hello, hello. But then uh, if it is a company that looks so informal and even impolite to start with that if you are representing, if you are the receptionist, if you are the business executive who is representing it. So, you start with the name of the company, use polite greetings immediately after that such as good morning, good afternoon, good evening and add your name so that you tell who is the one who is speaking and then offer to help. Example, you can begin by saying if you are representing the company, Sterling Services, good morning, this is Ronita, how may I help you? So, Sterling Services, you begin with the company's name, good morning, you start with the greeting and then introduce, you say this is Ronita, I am Ronita, either way and then how may I help you? So, this indicates that, okay, so you are trying to give some kind of uh, uh, concern at the beginning of the talk itself and then it makes the other person slightly open up. If you are in a key position to deal with many callers, so again either uh, at the higher level as an executive again you attend to so many calls or at another lower level in the receptionist uh, level or in the call center if you are dealing with so many calls. And then if you have to keep simultaneous callers on hold, so keeping two, three people on hold, you need to be very uh, polite and you have to follow some decorum. 
some simple norms. First ask for permission before you keep them on hold. You can ask politely, may I keep you on hold for a moment ma'am or you can ask, will you please wait for a minute sir. Okay. So, normally when you request politely, nobody is going to say no, they will say okay, please uh, I will wait or uh, make it as quick as possible. And when you get back, when you give the connection back, apologize very politely. You can say I apologize for keeping you on hold or you can say I am sorry to have kept you on waiting. Then say thanks if you are not apologizing, you can say thank you sir for holding, thank you ma'am for your patience. So, that makes the other person feel the warmth and then they will feel like respecting the other person at the end that is you. And then when you do it as I have been telling from the previous one, say it with a smile. So, the receiver can actually feel it, the receiver can actually sense that you are smiling. So, you are actually cheerful and when you are going to make very important calls, the formal calls, sometimes you may have to order something for your company, sometimes you even give a telephonic interview. The calls again are making or marring your life and career on such occasions and in general make this as a practice, organize yourself that is prepare yourself for the call mentally, emotionally, physically. Suppose it is an interview call, keep the CV ready next to your hand and then remember how you should present yourself, remember what you should be telling and then emotionally cheer yourself. So, there may be some slight negative thoughts, but then you cheer up and then you say that yeah, I am going to make this. Feel strong mentally and then in terms of physicalness, so keep yourself in a comfortable position, so that you do not feel even if the call goes for half an hour, 45 minutes to get up or move around. So, seat yourself in a comfortable uh, chair and then you decide whether the room has to be uh, cooled using air conditioning or fan should be on. If the fan is making too much noise, it is better to switch off the fan and keep the air conditioner and so on. So, keep yourself physically comfortable also. Now, in terms of uh, uh, mental preparation, keep the notes ready in mind or even write it and keep it because it saves time. Sometimes you forget the most important thing. So, that is again a human tendency to talk trivial things initially and then talk about the most important thing towards the end and by the time the other person talked about something very interesting, then you got distracted. So, finally what happened? You missed the important point and you have to call again. Suppose it is an overseas call, so again you pay more. On the other hand, the other person at the other end may not be ready to receive your call also. So, his time is also precious. So, keep these notes written preferably or at least mentally because it will save time, money and your energy and the other person's energy also. Organize your desk. When wherever you are keeping the phone, keep your desk clean. Okay. Do not pile things on phone, especially if you are using a cordless or so and then the cordless is lying. So, over that you have thrown your shirt or t-shirt and then towel and then when the uh, phone comes, you rush and then the ring sound is heard, but then you do not know where the uh, phone is lying, where the cordless is lying. So, you keep looking for it. So, do not do that, do not pile anything on the phone, keep it clean and keep the notepad and pen near the phone. So, as I was saying that uh, if you are a right hander, so keep it on the right side and phone you keep it on the left side and know your phone. Today phones are coming with lot of facilities. When uh, nobody is making a call, you make calls to your friends and others. So, use lots of options like speaker option, like mute, like hold and then like conference call and so on and then even uh, voicemail, how you can activate it, what kind of voicemail can be uh, recorded on your uh, phone. Okay. So, these things you should practice and you should master the equipment, not when you are making a call, but even before the call you try to know everything. Uh, phones will come with catalogs and uh, good phones will have catalogs available online. If you do not get it, download the catalog online and then try to master it. 
most of the times if you are alone and then if uh, you have a good phone system, so use the speaker so that uh, uh, you hear it clearly and then you can also make notes without uh, sweating, without taking efforts. And it is also a good practice to use uh, speaker, but then if others are around and then you want to maintain privacy and then you can uh, avoid using speaker. When you make the call, again you need to remember certain things, you check the number before dialing because it is very, very unprofessional to dial a number and say that sorry it is wrong number. The professionals never make uh, wrong calls. Okay. You just carefully dial the number and then uh, when you dial you check it properly and even the numbers that you note, note it correctly. And when you make the call, introduce yourself. Okay. It is very highly impolite to ask whether so and so is actually the one who has taken the phone. You have to introduce yourself first, this is John or uh, this is Gupta or this is Pankaj who is making the call and then give the polite greetings as I was saying, good morning. So, am I talking to so and so, so or uh, is it the right time to talk to so and so? And then once the person accepts your greetings and then you know that it is the right person. So, be clear and concise, what is it that you want to talk, especially in professional ones, even you can even write it, rehearse it before talking and say the right thing at the right time and end aptly. So, uh, what do I mean by this? Sequence what you have to tell. So, you start with something less important and then proceed towards the other thing and then especially sometimes even you may be even slightly conducting interviews on phone. So, you sequence uh, according to the way you want to ask questions and then gather information, keep the most important one towards the end so that the person gets warmed up and then tries to answer your question. And then when you reach the end, end appropriately, while ending Again, you can follow some simple norms, appreciate the person. So, you can say that would be great, it was nice talking to you and then give or end with a sense of hope. You may say, I look forward to your call. You can also say, I hope, I hope to see you in the party or I hope to see you somewhere in the meeting etcetera and very simple normal way of saying bye, you can just see. Uh, say bye and then you can say see you soon or have a nice day and then you can close it. Now, there are some troublesome speakers like uh, they want to talk to you, either they like your voice or they know you or you are a busy person and then they know that uh, it is beneficial for them to talk to you. So, they hang on to the call. So, the receiver refuses to end the call. Now, you have to politely say that whatever you have instead of uh, uh, being afraid of saying no, you have to tell them if you have a meeting. So, you tell them that you have a meeting and you are rushing to the meeting. If you are a student or a teacher, you can always say that you have a class or you have a lecture going on, you want to attend to the talk or any appointment, say you have an appointment with the doctor. So, you need to go and uh, catch it up or even like you have an appointment for servicing your uh, vehicle. So, these things you can just tell and then you can politely end the call and you can give time whenever you are free again if the other person wants to continue with that. You can also tell them that if anything else is there, they can message you or they can even email you. Okay. In the coming lectures, we will also talk about how you can follow certain etiquette in terms of using emails. But Right now, you can just use that as another option, especially to people who hold on to you and then they do not let you finish a call. So, you can give them that as an option. Now, when you receive a call on somebody's behalf, like you are there, the call has come for somebody and then the person has asked you to make some important information and then you note those information and then you have to pass it to the other person. So, this again may be because you are a receptionist or you are in a key position, you are a manager 
or you are a colleague and then you receive the call and you have to pass this. Now, it is important that you should note the details of the call instead of thinking that you will remember it and pass it, especially in office situation, corporates, you need to note the details of the call such as first the name of the person, the date in which the call is made because your colleague may come after 3 days, after a week and you may not be there. So, you make a note of it and leave it on his or her table, the time of the call and the purpose of the call, why did the person call you okay? and what did the person want from your colleague. So, you mention that. What action needs to be taken? So, if it is an again a business situation, somebody calls somebody to follow up something, uh, send the order or even take an order and then when, what is the time frame in which it has to be done. So, give such details if you leave a message in an answering machine too. If you have to call somebody and do that, you give all these uh, details. In uh, professional uh, situations, it is better to use a format. Uh, but uh, even some uh, uh, officers at home, they try to use the format like this. So, simply it is like telephone notes. So, you leave space for date time, it is easy for the person to note it and then message for whom, whom uh, did the message uh, come. So, you write the person's name from okay, and who called this one. And then what is the message? That is what is the purpose? So, as I said, it could be just ordering, booking a room, etcetera. And uh, what action needs to be taken also can be written there. And contact number or contact address or anything that needs to be noted, you can note it there also. So, that will uh, help you as a format to uh, avoid any kind of miscommunication or sometimes you miss noting it and the other person does not call. So, the other side of the person is a very important person and he gets angry or he stops entire uh, communication business transaction with your office. So, those things can be avoided. Now, before I conclude, I just want to uh, highlight that there are some challenges okay, uh, when you slowly become a professional, when you become an advanced uh, telephone uh, user in a professional manner. One of the challenges we will discuss now and then in the coming lecture, I will be discussing more challenges and then the uh, required qualities that you need to tackle those challenges. One of the challenges that you need to face is delivering unpleasant news. Now, delivering unpleasant news can be anything like an accident that happened and whatever cargo, whatever materials which were carried, so they all got wasted. Okay. For example, ice cream, okay, you were sending from one truck load of ice cream to another place. So, there was an accident, immediately the accident happened and the cooler inside stopped working, the ice cream started melting and this has to go for a party okay, and the people are waiting for the ice cream to come. So, from this kind of unpleasant news, it can be even death of somebody, okay. somebody is expected but the person died. So, it could be any kind of calamity, any accident or any delay. So, you are supposed to uh, deliver something on this day, but you cannot deliver it because your workers went on a strike. So, you need just two days more. So, how are you going to handle this? Now, generally when you have to deliver unpleasant news, do not beat around the bush, okay. do not try to tell uh, things which are not relevant and then slowly come because it will annoy the other person. Get straight to the point, of course, in a very polite manner. For example, you can say that, uh, sir, you are expecting uh, this uh, ice cream truck to reach by this time, but then I am very sorry to inform you that it met with an accident. Now, state the reason, so how it happened. Maybe you can say that it was not our driver's fault, but uh, from the opposite side, the other truck person came and then uh, he was drunk and then he hit our uh, truck. So, the reason will actually make the other person cool down somewhat. Now, provide alternative solution. 
So, you can say that for example, sir, uh, we are not able to bring this to you because it has started melting, but we have a sister concern there. The only problem is like it is not our brand, but then the brand is equally good. So, we can just give them a call and then ask them to deliver. Maybe they will slightly supply less than what we can do, but at least you can manage the situation. So, that is the alternative uh, uh, solution that will also make the other person feel comfortable. And at the end of it, you can uh, uh, say sorry or even when you begin that, you can say I am afraid that uh, so and so met with an accident, I do apologize. Okay. So, these things will make the other person feel comfortable. Now, at the end of it, realize the most important point. This is a very uh, critical and a very uh, challenging situation. But having conveyed this, you can expect any kind of response. The person can get angry, the person may not be willing to accept whatever compromise that you are giving or the person may be softened by the kind words that you are using and the uh, nice suggestions that you are giving. At the end of it, remember you should talk, you should convince the other person in such a manner that you should earn the other's respect. The person knows, for example, if you are going to uh, uh, convey some very bad news, the person knows that okay, you, are, you, are, you have said something sorry. Usually people get angry with the person who brings it, but at the same time the way you say it and then the comfort that you are giving should earn you the respect for you that will help you to go ahead in communication with the same person in the long time to come. I would like to conclude with one uh, quote from Sophocles, which is uh, uh, close to the thought I was uh, concluding in the previous one. So, he says that no one loves the messenger who brings bad news. So, if you see the kings, if they see somebody bringing the bad news, uh, go to the level of beheading the person, killing the messenger immediately, the one who brings bad news. So, uh, that is true even now, when you bring bad news, people do not like you, but it is important as I said, if you use all the polite mannerisms and the decorum that I suggested in this, you will be able to earn respect and it is important that at the end of the call, even if you have delivered the bad news, so they feel that okay, they talk to somebody who is very nice, warm, genuine and respectful. So, with this note, I conclude this uh, lecture. Thank you for watching this. In the next one, I will come with the final discussion on improving your telephone skills. Thank you. Have a nice day.